Welcome to Educated Discussions, the podcast where Alma and Felipe explore the groundbreaking impact of AI on our world and its role in shaping the future of video game sequels. Hey there, I'm Elmo. And I'm with Felipe, and we're diving deep into the wonders of artificial intelligence, from AI-generated content to immersive gaming experiences. Join us as we uncover the potential of AI and how it's reshaping our favorite video games. Get ready for insightful discussions and exciting guests on Educated Discussions. I'm Elmo, and Felipe, I just used AI to write the intro for this podcast that I just read to you. That was actually pretty good. Um, Some critiques. A little too much words there. <laughs> it was bluff. very wordy. It was okay. very fluffy. Yeah, exactly. But that was solid. I was very confused with what you were doing, and I'm like, this boy used AI. <laughs> now, Felipe, why do you think I used AI to write the intro of today's cast? Let me tell you, because that is the topic that this cast is about. Uh, some time ago, I came up with an idea. What if you and I were to each write a plot synopsis for a video game sequel that has not been created yet? And we then have AI do the same thing. And what we're going to do is we're going to read our synopsis that we wrote. We're going to read what AI comes up with. And we're going to give an honest opinion as to what we liked more. Now, we've messed around with AI in the past. Elaborate. So personally, as a high school teacher, I've run into AI a lot in the past, like 10% or so or so of the school year, because that's when a plethora of students decided, oh, so I don't, ha- I don't have to do the work. I can just do the AI uh, and it could, well, it could do it for me, which you might think, oh, that's a really cool tool. There's probably some ingenious ways we could like figure out and, 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 to to utilize and make our writing better mm-hmm. however it i haven't thought of a good way just yet just because the way my course works it's it's actually incredibly easy to use ai to write mm-hmm. uh any of our assignments just because of the nature of the class and i it got really frustrating because they have this big exam that's like he- heavily weighted on them and me mm-hmm. so when they don't get in the practice or the reps as i like to call them right they're going to be weaker come exam time. Yeah. And that's become really frustrating uh, because it actually is this really cool tool that there's, again, probably a neat way to utilize. Like when we were at Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. And your wife. Not just ourselves. Right. But with our children. <laughs> there was a birthday <laughs> Just party. want to set that, you know, uh, clear that up. I mean, the pizza's all right. I mean. Oh, that pizza is actually yeah. better than it should be. <laughs> but we... That was shortly after chat. Well, what is it? Chat GBT? What is yeah, it? Yeah, chat GBT. GBT. Okay. That is shortly, uh, well, at least after you discovered it. I'm sure it was out a little bit after, uh, yeah, before then, did. but it was still kind of at that, almost hitting its peak. And you were like, hey, let me, let me show you this, uh, this AI stuff I'm messing around with. And, and your wife was like eating a Chuck E. Cheese salad. Right. And she had some complaints about it. Mm-hmm. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, you, you and her were talking about like, Oh man, he was like, "Oh, you should say something." And she's like, "What am I gonna say?" But I should say something. Yeah, she was complaining about not having enough eggs in the salad, or something like that. So that's why I went on there and and quickly asked for a an AI created email complaint to Chuck E. Cheese yes. corporate about uh, not having enough eggs in the salad, and it sounded very legit. <laughs> it it's sounded so, like so valid legit. complaints. So legit that Felipe decided to make an entire cast based on that very novel idea I had in that quick moment. Right, right. But this time, we're going to see if we can do any better than AI can. So, we each chose a game, as I mentioned earlier. Elmo, what game did you choose? Okay, so I originally chose Kingdom Hearts 4, but then Felipe here said, but that's already announced. And I took that as, oh, so I can't do that. Oh, you could have. Well, I, that's why I decided to go in the complete opposite direction okay. and do a game that there is no chance there will be a sequel of. Okay. <laughs> um, a, as many may or may not know. Does that make sense? Many, Anyway, as some may know, mm-hmm. the Crystal Dynamics Square Enix published uh, Avengers game Ooh, is Marvel's being Avengers. delisted uh, sometime in August. I believe mid-August. And it's going to be hopping off a of Game Pass uh, as of yesterday when this was recorded. So this is a game that many will never get to play. 
So this is kind of going to be like uh, an alternate history version of what would life be like if Crystal Dynamics went from Tomb Raider yeah. to being able to make a second Marvel's Avengers game. So like what if this game actually did well and people played it enough to warrant a sequel? Yeah, because okay. um, this is a game that I was originally... I remember when it was first announced, I was like, uh, no, this is... It was the it was the most infuriating like debut because I felt like and, and a lot of people made this joke. It was like the like I'm trying to find a very appropriate way to say this, but all of them looked like knockoff yeah, the MCU great, the versions. Great value version yeah. of the MCU. Yeah. And it just came off really hokey. And then they like made a big deal about the voice cast, and I'm like, that's just no that's just Nathan Drake. Yeah. <laughs> Nathan Drake is Iron Man. Like you didn't like, right. why are you making a big deal about this? And the way they revealed it, I remember, I don't know if you recall, but it was like, look at all these logos behind us. Captain America's shield and Hulk's fist. Yeah. And I'm like, so, like, there's no interesting thing here. Yeah, there's no difference. Yeah. However, then they went on to make a game that wasn't about them and was actually way more interesting. And if they had led with that, I would have given it an entirely different chance. Hmm. And so, again, one of the reasons I did choose this game, though, is because... It's kind of like a, this could almost be like a time capsule in a way of like, hey, like, this is a game that, again, has no chance of ever getting a sequel. I don't think Disney's going to hand over those rights. Square's not going to touch it. The actually good game that they made, Guardians of the Galaxy, is probably not getting a sequel. Mm. So this is just, like I said, an alternate history. Plus, it's a game that probably will never get discussed again, just because it's not going to be purchasable in a few weeks. Now, before you came over today to do this uh, cast, by the way, we're in my house. I didn't say it this time. Anyways. Um, I could have put that in the AI. <laughs> you could have, yeah. Make sure to mention where I believe his house. <laughs> I honestly didn't know you even played this game. And when I texted you about this idea weeks ago, this is finally got a chance to record. And you said Marvel's Avengers. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, okay. All right, yeah. I'm curious to see what you came up with. Um, my game that i chose is something that probably will get a sequel but has not been announced yet. i think it's been like not a, not formally announced said without being said kind yeah of deal. like kind of like yeah i'm working on the script i forget what's that guy's name that neil, um neil Druck. Uh, i'm sorry the, the the writing genius as the hbo uh post tv show they ain't wrong uh, of the last of us uh guy had to say Neil, he, he, he gonna look at this cast and be like, I'm gonna hire this guy. He gonna listen to this cast. He gonna listen to this cast. <laughs> I chose... Oh, we never even said the game. Uh, no, we, <laughs> I chose The Last of Us. Uh, in this case, I will be, of course, doing a sequel to the most recent game, Last of Us Part 2. So this will be Last of Us Part 3. You're not gonna... You should go like, The Last of Us, the third. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Parts. They already the, the have, Shrek. They set the president with parts. They, they even went, when they released the new one, they called it part one. So it's like. I mean, right, if I'll I Google it. God of War, I'm going to get two different games. So they, they make up their own rules yeah, with titles. Add yeah, the year. Anyways. What so, year did it come out? 2018. Okay. Yeah. You think the average person's. Yes. Gonna... Okay, anyway. On top. Versus 2005. I'm sure they'll know it the more recent one. <laughs> Anyways. So yes. So I chose Last of Us Part 3. We're going to put each other to the test and see how we fare. Did you want to start first? Yeah, that's fine. Let's do so, it. So I did mine a little differently in that I had the AI write the plot synopsis first. And then just so they could match, I stole the formatting. Okay. So there's going to be similarities in terms, not in terms of the storyline, but in terms of how the information's just laid out. If that makes sense. By the way, real quick, before yeah. you continue, how long does it take for that thing? Is that instantaneous? Like yeah. when you ask, okay, because I haven't done mine. So oh. we might have to do that. I just, I, I thought okay. we were going to do it live here. I didn't know you were going to oh. do it already and okay. steal the format. This will be interesting. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I, I, I have my own plots and not, well, I'll explain mine later when I get to mine. But um, yeah, let's go with yours. So, okay. Would you so, like to hear mine or the uh, AI one? First? Start with yours. Okay. So let me go into a different <clears throat> section of my phone here. So I kind of went with like a, a sillier title. Okay. Just because like to emphasize the fun, this game was really lacking in the fun because as I played it, it was so clearly a multiplayer focused game yeah. despite having a single player story mode mm -hmm. that was 
very good in the beginning. Was, yeah. Like, Come on, Miss Marvel. Like, just do that. Let's just do that the whole time. Yeah. I, um, I also played all of the uh, um, additional campaigns in okay. the lead up for this before they were locked off Game Pass. So mine's a little different in terms of it does bring up the Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, and uh, Black Panther uh, gotcha. post game. Uh, or or post release, right, right. Yeah, all drops. I did was just play the story, and I think I messed around with Black Panther just to see right. how he played. That was it. I didn't play anything else. He was pretty cool. He was like they were. Hey. There was something there. Mister, what Christopher yeah, Judge? Is, yeah. All right. So again, I went with a sillier title just because. Hey, focus on the fun in this alternate focus timeline. Everyone. This is the sequel to Marvel's Avengers. Also, I'm an English teacher, so it probably sounds a little more. Uh, it's just going to probably sound just different than Felipe's. Okay. Just because writing structure and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We want to emphasize we are not writers. Uh, Elmo is an English teacher, of course, so he's a little more proficient, but we're still not professionals. We have no. not written anything before, so keep that in mind. Be- right. Go easy on us. So something that happened in that game, uh, the Marvel's Avengers, was they implied like this Kree invasion mm-hmm. was going to come and... Yeah. Mess everything up. And the, 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 the additional campaigns go into that a little bit, but then they make it a whole time travel story. To the point where I'm like, why did you go in this direction? You're talking about the post content? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, gotcha. why is Hawkeye be working with the bad guys to go in t- into the future to help? Like, it's just, it's, it, it, it was a, a lot, lot. A lot of questions. For anyway, me. it was like, where's the, like, anyway, I tried to put some focus on Captain Marvel. Okay. Anyway, Marvel's Avengers Time Unraveled. Oh. Okay. The world has finally begun to heal after the Avengers successfully defeated AIM's invasion of Wakanda, which is the final uh, post-game right. release. However, a new threat emerges when an evil presence known as the Timekeeper begins to manipulate time itself, causing disruptions all throughout history. As the Avengers investigate, they realize that time is unraveling and it's endangering the past, present, and future. The game starts right after the Kate Bishop Clint Barton, who is Hawkeye, Mm -hmm. and Black Panther join the core Avengers team to address the coming crisis. Together, they are going to work together to prevent changes in time from destroying any possible hope in the future while investigating the sorry i have a typo while investigating the timekeeper i was like who's tim this is why i was gonna replace this <laughs> while investigating tim he begins to reshape history for nefarious purposes as the adventures traverse through different time periods and locations they encounter three new heroes to help First, we have Doctor Strange, who will bring his skills in the mystic arts to the team. Spider-Man, Miles Morales, whose technological and uh, and electricity-based skills will prove valuable in the fight against the Timekeeper. And finally, Captain Marvel, whose super powerful abilities, again, going back, I'm like, super powerful? Why did I say it like that? Whatever. Her super powerful abilities will prove important in countering the time disruptions and discovering the timekeeper's true motives. The plot thickens (laughs) as Kamala Khan, who is Miss Marvel, discovers that her polymorphic abilities... I did have to Google what her abilities were called, by the way. Her polymorphic abilities are the key to stabilizing the fabric of time. She becomes increasingly important as the Avengers realize that her inhuman powers can help disrupt the Timekeeper's temporal disruptions. Again, I said disrupt the disruptions. Mm -hmm. And the English teacher in me is really annoyed at that. Anyway, (laughs) Kamala Khan's unique ability to adapt her body becomes essential in combating the villainous Timekeeper's minions and closing time rifts that threaten reality. As the Avengers uh, trek through different timelines, they end up going against various now-corrupted heroes due to the changes in time. First, we have Corruption Iron Man. I think I should say Corrupted. 
This is a timeline where Tony Stark's arc reactor technology was never developed, but he instead became even more enhanced by the many millions of dollars and billions made with his advanced technology. Okay. Then we have, I just wrote evil Black Widow. There's probably something better. I'm sure. Uh, Corrupted Black Widow. We'll keep this. Okay, corrupted. That works. Uh, but that doesn't work with my third one. Anyway, oh, okay. uh, Corrupted Black Widow, altered by a timeline where her past truly began to haunt her even more. She now uses her spy skills and prowess to serve a more sinister purpose. Mm-hmm. And finally, Tyrant Thor. In a timeline where Thor never learned to just chill out, he rules Ad- Asgard with an iron fist, seeking to take over all other realms. Iron Fist is in this game? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I should have put Daredevil. Anyway, he's, I'm going to add that at the end here. Uh, the Avengers, also, Daredevil's in the game. <laughs> <laughs> the Avengers must confront and try to save their former comrades while dealing with the chaos created by the Timekeeper. The missions become more and more emotionally devastating as more uh, blips in time start to cause unraveling between the teammates throughout their journey they also discover they discover the complexities of time travel and how it's not as simple as one would think in marvel's avengers time unraveled players will face various odds and face fallen heroes and witness kamala khan play a vital role in saving time and preserving the future of the marvel universe and that is what I came up with for nice. Marvel's Avengers Time Unraveled. Time Unraveled. I gotta I gotta make the Photoshop for this. It won't be that great because I don't have that much time. But <laughs> I will do it. Okay. Time unraveled. Okay. All right. So did you want to give thoughts on that first? <clears throat> uh yes, yeah, let's give okay. thoughts on that. Well, I guess you have your own thoughts because you made it. But my my critiques or not critiques, my thoughts seemed kinda I don't wanna say generic because aren't all marvel superhero stuff and storylines about the same Mm -hmm. but i did like the it's like a way to do the timeline thing like the the multiverse kind of deal but each one is negative so in this case the the tony stark thing Mm -hmm. instead of him you know whatever uh uh, thor not being humbled and all that Mm -hmm. stuff it just you know so i do like that there's a way to explore different outcomes of certain things and i assume the game would would you what like go into that like time and see these cutscenes play out mm-hmm. and stuff okay gotcha so that i'd actually be really interested to see all that because i love although multiverse stuff is getting kind of played out but when done right it's still always fun to see because you everyone knows these stories yeah. everyone knows iron man everyone yeah. knows all well, these people. i was trying to use the random time travel that they incorporated into no no the, I, I get it because it's actually really frustrating because that Cree stuff that's hinted at at the end like you it's, see the statue fight it's, at the it's, end it's so. mentioned but it's it just it did they did smart didn't, to, to, to just avoid the Cree stuff <laughs> no they should have just went further in that and not brought up time travel because that was yeah. never hinted at in yeah, yeah. the in the no, original well, I mean game. the using the time travel was smart too because that way you could explore these multiverses and and how time would affect it if something were to diverge from a certain point Mm -hmm. you know similar to what they've brought up in the movies when i was kate bishop running around and then hawkeyes like going into different timelines and then there's like hulk with a beard and all this a white beard i was just like what this isn't i anyway uh, so that's that explains kind of why I went in that direction in the first place because uh, the AI did not go in that direction. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, are you ready? Yes. All right. So that was Elmo's. By the way, spoilers to Marvel's Avengers. Anyways. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is the, the AI created one is called Marvel's Avengers War of Dimensions. Okay. okay. In this sequel, an unprecedented crisis unfolds. As dimensional breaches start appearing all over the world, causing chaos and unleashing powerful demons from different dimensions, the Avengers must assemble once again to confront this multi-dimensional threat and restore balance before reality collapses. First, new heroes. Spider-Gwen, Gwen Gwen Stacy. From an alternate dimension, Spider-Gwen 
swings into action with her acrobatic skills, web swinging, swinging, sorry, slinging abilities, <laughs> and her own unique style to save the world from the interdimensional chaos. Then we have Black Knight. <laughs> okay. Sorry, that's I'm I, I, Black Knight, an archaeologist and wielder of the enchanted ebony blade. Black Knight joins the Avengers, wielding the power of the dark and mystical artifact to protect the realms from the dimensional invasion. Okay. And Captain Britain, protector, <laughs> protector of the British Isles and guardians of the multi, guardian of the multiverse. Captain Britain joins the Avengers with his superhuman strength, flight, and magical abilities to confront the interdimensional menace. As the dimensional, uh, now we have main story. As the dimensional breaches multiply, the Avengers face a daunting task of tracking down the cause of these disruptions. They soon discover that a pos- the powerful cosmic entity, entity seeks to em- merge all dimensions into one and reshape reality according to its will. The Avengers must traverse through various dimensions, fighting off formidable foes while preventing the catastrophic merging of worlds. Throughout the game, players will experience the convergence of different dimensions. I think we've said that like three times. Yeah. Um, interacting with various versions of Marvel characters and exploring diverse realms. The narrative will focus on the complexities of interdimensional conflict and the challenges of keeping the fabric of reality intact. It's a lot of words. Okay. Yeah. Marvel's Avengers War of the Dimensions delivers an epic sequel with a focus on interdimensional warfare <laughs> and the inclusion of new and beloved heroes. <laughs> Players will embark on a thrilling journey to protect the multiverse, witnessing the convergence of different dimensions while uniting the mightiest heroes across realities against this newest threat. And did they have a main villain? No. So why are the worlds... Oh, I don't know. I'm, I just read what it wrote. Okay. Interesting. All right. So that was the AI's version. Yeah. Very interested in the choices they had for the heroes. <laughs> Listen, Captain Britain is going to be the newest. Yeah, Captain TikTok Britain. Okay, craze. that's cool. Black Knight. That's it. That's a poll. I'm not familiar with them. Him, her. I don't know. Isn't Black Knight in that Eternals? No. Or he's hinted at or something. Not that I know of. Maybe we'll look it up later. Anyways. They said dimension a lot. Mm-hmm. And I know you had some repeat things or whatever, but that's just what it, that was a lot. Uh-huh. It sounded smart on the surface, but as you really start thinking about how much times they said in, in the interdimensional threat, they, mm-hmm. uh, or, or threat, they must transfer between dimensions. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. yeah, but you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> there's just, it, there's no depth to it. It's very yeah. surface level. It almost sounds PR in a way. Like, that ending for sure. Yeah, exactly. Like it sounds very a lot of fun words to throw in there to kind of spark interest, but like you said, very surface level. Uh, mm-hmm. not, not not much depth going on there because when you really start trying to dissect it, not much is going on. And like I said, like wait, so who's the villain? Why is this even happening? Like I know that usually plot synopsis might not give the full details you don't have to say oh because of you know but just something that hints as to why this is even happening in the first place unless that's the mystery i guess that's part of it but that wasn't implied no so interesting Mm -hmm. and there definitely are similarities between what i wrote and what they wrote but i made sure to like not bring up any uh when i originally wrote this okay I was like, "Did you do you know about Marvel's Avengers?" Blah 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 blah. They're like, "We know we know everything up until September 2021." So there was definitely stuff that it didn't account for that was in probably some of those expansions, right? Um, and that's maybe why it made it more general, and gotcha. I was able to get more specific because it did cap it at September 2021. Oh, I don't know. You can ask uh, Chat GBT. That well, I just wanted to make sure it knew right, what right. I, before I jumped in. Both are following the trajectory that that superhero movies and media shows, all that stuff, have been kind of following in recent years. A whole bunch of multiverse things, dimension things, uh, time travel. So both are fairly similar, but as as eloquently put that the AI was... They didn't incorporate uh, Ms. Marvel. They they didn't incorporate Ms. Marvel. I didn't hear it. Actually, did they mention any other characters from the original cast? Other than the three uh, new people. Yeah, no that was other odd. characters mentioned. So I don't know what everyone's doing. So no. Sounds cool at first, but no. No. 
your version was better. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. I, I win. Elmo has. Wait, no. <clears throat> Elmo wins. You have beat AI. I'm the new AI. Ask me to write your essays, kids. <laughs> pay me. Well, I mean, like you, I'm the one grading it. Like just pay me to 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 write yeah, it. I'm sure that's and then I'll, ethical. And then just <laughs> no one. Okay, everyone, rewind like 20 seconds. Yeah, and do, and don't listen. Okay, to what I was going to say in that 20 seconds. Go between dimensions and go back in time. Anyway. That's topical. What was the name of the movie? The, the, or the, the game? The game. Yours was uh, time. No time. Un- no something unraveled. Mine is uh, time unraveled. Time unraveled. This right. one is War of the Dimensions. War of the Dimensions. Okay, of course they had dimensions in the name. All right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't even connect that. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, then we should probably take a small break to make sure we save all of what we have, and then we'll start. And then we'll begin with mine. Hello, Fresh. <laughs> Other podcasting advertisements. Me undies, and we are back. For the second half of today's cast, where we will be finding out what Felipe's sequel to The Last of Us Part 2 will feature in terms of storyline and possibly the continuing adventures of Ellie. We'll find out. Okay. All right. So I did, I, I said originally the idea for this was a plot synopsis of what this game would be. I kind of didn't really know what the average length was to one. So I just Googled it. And like, all right, average length for a plot synopsis is anywhere between 500 to 1,000 words. So I kind of tried to hit the 500, but even then it was, I didn't really hit it. So this is what I have. So this is this uniquely titled Last of Us. No, no, sorry. The Last yeah, of Us. Yeah, there we go. Part three. <laughs> really? <clears throat> okay. Of course, spoilers for Last of Us Part Two. Come on, guys. Yeah. Set two years after the events of Last of Us 2, a broken Ellie now takes ownership of Joel Miller's house. She lives there by herself, very lonely, but by choice. The house is very unkept and messy, with the exception of Joel's room, which is spotless. Dina and JJ live with Dina's parents and keep their distance from Ellie around town. This makes it difficult for Ellie as her love for them is still present, but filled with guilt. An outside group starts to give Jackson issues, small at first, but escalating in severity until Dina and JJ are put in the face of danger. Ellie, along with Tommy and others, barely stop the attack, with the last words of one of the attackers saying, more are coming. Ellie sets out on her own to find those threatening Jackson, this time using her need to protect those she loves as her driving force versus revenge. In her quest to put an end to things, she runs into unlikely allies, a worn down but still fierce Abby and Lev, and must put their differences aside to overcome the threat, with the compromise being that Abby and Lev get accepted into Jackson. The reason for this being the fact that it is very hard to find a safe, not overly violent and malicious community, as we saw a lot in the previous uh, games. Throughout their journey, Ali and Abby finally get to talk about what happened, each providing their own perspective. Ellie? What I what I said? You said Ali. Oh, sorry. Okay, Maybe just make sure it's not another character. That might have been my no. no. <laughs> I might have said it wrong. Okay, sorry. Just making sure. Ellie and Abby finally get to talk about what happened, each providing their own perspective into the events from what transpired in the past. While no amazing friendship is formed. Respect and trust is earned on each side, and together, they find a way to stop the plan onslaught and save Jackson. Ellie, Abby, and Lev arrive in Jackson, much to the dismay of Tommy. Of course, remember, Tommy. Very upset. (laughs) An unhinged Tommy makes an effort to finally exact revenge for his brother and shoots Lev. Before continuing... Before continuing any further, the community of Jackson stands up for Abby and Lev, with Ellie joining in to notate their contributions. It is decided Tommy will go to jail for an undetermined amount of time. Life resumes in Jackson, with time lapses showing a a slow rebuild of Jackson. Minimal but civil interactions between the main characters, 
and a happy shot of JJ uh, finally being allowed to play with Ellie for a little while. The game ends. <clears throat> a mid credit scene shows Dina arriving at Ellie's door, thanking Ellie and providing her with the gift. Uh, it's a box. <laughs> I put inside the box are prosthetic fingers meant to replace the ones lost <laughs> and allow- <laughs> I knew that would get you. <laughs> uh, uh, prosthetic fingers meant to replace the ones lost and allow her to play guitar once again. Ellie picks up the guitar and begins to strum in this mini playable section. Eventually, she plays and sings the song as the rest of the credits roll. The end. Okay. Last of Us Part 3. Two questions. Yeah. What song is she playing? Uh, undecided. You have to play the game. No, no, let's, let's decide that now. What was the last one? Get Low. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, she, well, she did Take that, On um, Me. She did... No, no, no. Um, um, I was thinking she played... Titanium. No. <laughs> Spoilers for Megan. <laughs> no, that song was... Uh, uh, yeah, it would have released in that time frame. I'm not sure what the song is. I just mm-hmm. thought it would be uh, a, a yeah. good. I, I, that I was mean, a, that was in, a joke. In question. theory, it, it would be cool if she played like the song that Joel <clears throat> sang for her. But she did already. Mm-hmm. If you sat down in the movie theater and played, she technically tried playing that oh. song and already you kind of so that movement that moment was kind of already, you know, given. Okay. So and, and what fingers did she lose? I don't recall. Um, some of the ones under, I think it was, I, I don't know the names of fingers well. Ring, pointer. pinky, middle, pointer. Thumb. I think it was we'll ring and them. pinky. Okay. Which. Is she fighting s- with her right hand then? Like, how would that work? What do you mean? Like, for shooting a gun. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you get into the overall story. Uh-huh. Well, no, I'm just wondering about the gameplay. Like, would that change? Like. I think she can, I think her pointer finger is still there. If I'm not mistaken. I'm trying to imagine. Okay, anyway. What is that called? The Last of Us Part 3. Okay, everybody. Here are my thoughts here. Okay. Other than the wondering how the gameplay works. It will play um, the same. I feel like that will not happen at all. When you get The Last of Us Part It'll 3. It happen more likely than Marvel's Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> um, from what... Okay, so... so Sorry, real quick. The yeah. reason why it's only set two years after is to mm-hmm. keep JJ small and cute. That's the whole the only okay. reason it's set only two years. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's all. I find that I would be frustrated at that uh, storyline a little bit. In what way? Because uh, and, and again, the context is probably important uh, because you obviously aren't going to divulge the entirety of a story. Mm-hmm. But yo, know, how did Ellie really get back into the good graces? of dina here save the town but i just feel like i would really want like a lot of like you got to really make this up keep in mind i never said they got back together okay all i said is she thanks ellie for for, okay. for what she did that's it uh what um any further relationship <laughs> i don't even know if i would, would even want to imply that i think honestly it's best she just they keep their own separate ways because ellie's got to have um consequences to you know to the decisions they made or that she made so it as much as i loved when they were together during the second game she screwed up you Mm -hmm. know and she needs to like i said suffer those consequences so i think there's still some room to be nice obviously uh, although it really wasn't ellie's kid jj was still ellie's kid for a while Mm -hmm. so that's why i I made sure to mention like there is Mm -hmm. some play time that she can get or whatever to visit the kid or whatever but it's like a divorced relationship kind of deal where you'll see the kid every now and then and there's like a gradual acceptance of ellie at the Mm -hmm. end but still nothing also significant uh is this sounds very final like there will not be a last of us part four there would not be you know because i feel tonally first one ends with like a oh snap kind of you really have to ponder the this choice that uh, this choice that joel made and two for me personally ends with like Ellie, go, go, go take a hike. She did. Get out of she here. She left the house. You saw. No, she, uh, where this one ends a lot more like serene, I feel. Mm-hmm. Um, so just thematically, it feels different than the other two. And I don't yeah. know if that's so something you, you purposefully did or you just wanted a happy ending. I want to have a happier ending 
than what the previous games have given. So that was my idea. Um, still not great. Not well, the not the not the <clears throat> how it could have ended. Mm-hmm. Had she just gave up on all that, which, which is why I think that this is the kind of story we will not get on an you incoming. Because it all it all ties three. in. I mean, if we really want to get into the wheeze into it, you know, we could expand on it. But ultimately, I mean, if Neil know, Druckmann wants to be considered a writing genius, mm-hmm. he is going he to, to hit me up. He, he's going to write a divisive <laughs> ending for sure. Okay, there will be a ton of ambiguity. And it'll be frustrating. Again, this is a synopsis. Yes, yes, yes. There is a lot more. I didn't even say who this this community is that's okay, threatening Jackson. Okay. You know? Well, now Felipe did ask me to go to ChatGBT and find what him AI's? an AI written sequel to The Last of Us Part 2. All right. So he's going to do the honors of reading. Sir, here's my phone. Probably could have texted it to you. Oh, but. gosh. <clears throat> All so right. You can see the, the title already <laughs> yeah. that uh, AI created. So keep in mind, guys, uh, AI is aware that Last of Us is called Part 1, and then there's The Last of Us Part 2. Mm-hmm. And I wrote here's The Last the... of Us Part 2. Like I, right, right. I wrote that out. So here's the title for this. Uh, they scream me, Dimon. Here's the title for AI's version of a sequel to Last of Us Part 2. This is called The Last of Us Reckoning. <laughs> The Last of Us Reckoning takes place several years after the events of Part 2. Ellie, now in her early 20s. <laughs> oh, that's right. She was 18 or 19 or whatever, right? Okay. It just sounds weird. Yeah, like... it does sound weird. It's, <laughs> uh, Ellie, now in her early 20s, is living in a safe settlement with Dina and JJ, trying to rebuild the semblance of a normal life. However, Ellie's past trauma and guilt over her actions in the previous game continue to haunt her. When a mysterious new faction emerges, led by a charismatic and ruthless leader named Gabriel, <laughs> <laughs> okay, their brutal tactics pose a significant threat, a threat to all settlements in the region. Ellie finds herself drawn into the conflict when the settlement is attacked and Dina goes missing, presumed kidnapped by Gabriel's forces. Determined to rescue Dina and protect her newfound family, Ellie embarks on a perilous journey across post post-apocalyptic america during her travels she encounters old friends and foes each with their own motives and agendas unsettling truths about the world they live in begin to surface making ellie question the choices she made in the past and the path she's taking now as ellie delves deeper into the conflict she befriends a mysterious woman named mia who seems to know more about gabriel and his plans together they form an unlikely alliance navigating dangerous territories facing infected creatures, and battling the tyranny of Gabriel's followers. Throughout the game, players will experience intense stealth and combat sequences, as well as emotionally charged moments that challenge Ellie's morals and convictions. The the consequences of her actions echo through her journey, forcing her to confront her inner demons and grapple with the concept of redemption. The Last of Us Reckoning also delves into the theme of sacrifice, highlighting the lengths people go to protect those they love and what it means to survive in a cruel world. As Ellie's missions progresses, she discovers the true cost of her decisions and how they affect not only her, but the people around her. The game's climactic showdown pits Ellie against Gabriel in a tense confrontation that tests her resilience and will to fight. The choices players make throughout the story influence the ultimate outcome of the battle and determine the fate of Ellie and those she cherishes. What the heck? Okay, The Last of Us Reckoning delivers a riveting narrative and emotionally charged storytelling, exploring the depths of human nature in the world ravaged by a devastating pandemic. The game concludes with poignant themes of hope and the enduring power of human connection, leaving players with a profound and unforgettable experience. Okay, now, don't, no, don't look at the post credit scene yet. Okay. I want, I want to talk about this first. Oh, put that down. So, you don't need it. Okay. No, no, no. That, so, what are your thoughts uh, with what you've just read? So, <clears throat> I guess I, they, I, I like what they have. I actually do really like what they have. I do not think Ellie should start out with Dina and JJ already. I don't think that's the, the path that they uh, chose, especially. With it's how been a couple ended. years. She's in her She's early in her early twenties now. <laughs> um but I mean, okay so so all right that aside <laughs> they i do like that they're getting into specifics here they start naming names yeah, and, gabriel, and all that like gabriel and mia okay 
they get into specifics everywhere else except for when she says that um she meets old and new ally what yeah that? something like that well, then the end gets very like it, this there's a lot of hope and sacrifice exactly it's like, so it's like okay so more pre kind of yeah. sounding things whereas i was actually trying mm-hmm. to yeah i liked the beginning the as overview. well but then it went into the constant like in my my constant mentioning of dimensions yeah a lot of consequences and guilt redemption <clears throat> but right there at the end oh god i am started reading the uh, no, 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 i started no. reading the post credits we're, we're going to wait for the post credits no, no, the, the AI did they wrote. imply that it's a choice based thing at the end that's what that's what it sounded mass effecty for a second and then it it yeah, right here. went away the choices players make throughout the story influence the ultimate outcome of the battle and determine the fate of ellie and those she cherishes so now, screw the first two games. Now you're given the option to... I mean, okay, this could technically kind of play into what Naughty Dog did, but not really because Naughty Dog just had story moments where you get to choose. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I remember when he was talking to, to, to Sam and about his mm-hmm. experiences, but that did not impact anything at all. It honestly sounds like they incorporated the Lord of the Rings, uh, Shadow of War. What, what the Nemesis system? The Nemesis system. That's what it sounds no, like. Nemesis. Yeah, because that's literally who you, how you interact with people changes what happens at the end maybe so but i don't like that 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 i don't like i don't like that that uh now you all want of a, sudden, a set story yeah because that's what they've done and you you and never you must worry do about, you were never you always do exactly you can't pivot exactly no such thing as evolving <laughs> no because that's that's the the president they said in the past why would the you know the the first game ending with with Joel decision the second game ending I mean I would love to what, when, see, to not go after Abby Felipe. but they did when I get to the end credits I will have remembered oh this is called the Last of Us Reckoning so they were already incorporating large changes from the title let alone the ending I guess so this isn't the Last of Us Part Three it's the Last of Us Reckoning evolution okay all right <laughs> any other thoughts though. That immediately spring to mind. I'm sure there's more we could say. It's definitely better worded than mine, uh, at least with some of it. I definitely felt like it was. They brought up the facing infectious creatures yeah. and the tyranny of as they are. But well, a lot of the just okay, a lot like, of fluff. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so that's my overall thoughts. Not a fan of where the game begins, and definitely not a fan that all of a sudden at the end. Uh, choices you make to affect the outcome i don't like that but that's just me okay. so uh your opinions on what this is before i read the, the post credit scene that apparently is there um like you, like what you were saying I, I, I believe it's already been stated but beginning i thought sound started really strong but then it becomes a a word vomit of g- generic nonsense mm-hmm. and uh, mentioning all these excuse me themes and everything with no context mm-hmm. it just felt like oh i'm i'm trying to Get my word count up. And where's JJ? Because she's living with JJ, but Dina gets goes missing. So where's JJ? <laughs> Got to play the game to find yeah. <laughs> DLC. Well, maybe, maybe that's what the post credit scene is. All let's right, find well, out. Are you ready for the post credit scene? All right, let's go. You, can I can I read it to you? Okay, sure. I want to read. I want to read the post credits. Okay, so you just to, to context as to why you want to read it. Apparently, you you took a glimpse of it I took, and started laughing. I, I took and then said it's actually not funny. And then you just put your phone down. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's. Just, I'll let you judge. Okay. I want you to go in fresh. All right. All right. I'm closing my eyes. Okay. Imagine this. It even says. Uh, I'll, I'll read what it says. Okay. Post credits. The screen fades in, showing a lush, overgrown forest. Birds chirp, and sunlight filters through the dense foliage. Mm-hmm. As the camera pans to the foliage, it reveals an isolated cabin hidden deep within the woods. Inside the cabin, a figure sits by a crackling fireplace. Their back turned to the camera. The camera slowly approaches and the figure turns, revealing an older, weathered Joel. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> you see why I was laughing? <laughs> um, he looks up, his eyes filled with a mixture of surprise and sadness. He softly says, Ellie. The camera pans out and we see Ellie standing in the doorway, looking both relieved and hesitant. She says, smiling, Yeah, it's me, Joel. The two share a poignant moment of silence, acknowledging the past and the journey they've both been through. Joel, with his voice trembling, says, I thought, I thought I lost you. Ellie gently says, 
You never lost me, Joel. I'm here and I found something worth fighting for. Joel, with tears in his eyes, says, I'm glad you did, kiddo. They share a heartfelt embrace, finally finding solace in each other's presence. <laughs> Sorry, believe his face here is great. Uh, the camera pans out of the cabin, showing the surrounding beauty of nature reclaiming the world. As the screen fades to black, a voiceover of Ellie's voice is heard. She says, In this world, we've seen the worst of humanity, but we've also seen the strength of those who fight for something bigger than themselves. The camera fades in, showing a final shot of Ellie and Joel walking into the sunset side by side, symbolizing the start of a new chapter of renewed hope for the future. The screen fades to black again, and the words, The Last of Us Reckoning, appear, leaving players with a powerful sense of closure and the knowledge that Ellie and Joel's journey continues. Filled with hope, redemption, and the enduring bond between two survivors in a post-pandemic world. <laughs> there was a point where I read this and I was like, Had, Felipe, you want me to look at this? You want me to like ret- ask it again to do something? Yeah. No, that kind of proves the point of where the flaws <laughs> in AI line or, or lie. W- what's wrong with that? Honestly, if that happens, I'm picking the last of reckoning over your story. If Joel is just alive. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> AI must not have seen the certain scene in, uh, in Last of Us Part 2. There's no way that that man's coming back. I'm sorry. Well, the, it was a reckoning, man. It was a reckoning. God, this, this virus spread and is now a zombie virus and brought him back. No, that's way off. That would, honestly, the way that was all worded would be incredible had he like fallen like had his death been like he fell somewhere you know we didn't actually see the death mm-hmm. but no we, we saw the death just we for... saw him pretty dead you know uh, so you don't like it no okay. so I, I love the way it was worded for sure again very fluffy but actually actually had more details than mm-hmm. the rest of the plot synopsis did yeah um, well, they it actually, can focus in on a short It focuses in on the exact uh, uh, post credit scene so it did paint a really good picture that was insane because that doesn't make any sense. Uh, however, I did uh, very quickly just type, why is Joel back if he's dead? And it says, I apologize for the confusion in the post credit scene. You're right. Joel did die in The Last of Us Part 2 and there was no indication of his return in the storyline provided. <laughs> the post credit scene should be consistent with the events of the game. Let's revise. Blah, blah, blah. Wow. And it just, it does that. It, it's the same exact ending, uh, except they replaced Joel with Tommy. <laughs> And it, it seems to feature Tommy saying, you know, Joel would be really proud of you. Mm-hmm. Ellie saying, I miss him. Um, Tommy saying, we carry his memory with us. And the rest is the same. Wow. No, it does not work with Tommy <laughs> either. That doesn't make any sense either. Okay. It makes more sense than... No, it definitely <laughs> does. But at this, it's almost equally not make sense. Because, like, what embrace did they ever share? Like, they, you know? No. <sighs> Okay. So I'm going to start, like, after every movie is playing the credits, I'm going to go to this and and ask, write a post credit scene for this movie, just just from now on at every movie I watch. Okay. Because if it could bring greatness like this, then it's a it's it's something the fans of the edu- the the eighties, as I like to call them, uh, it's an the little edu- unfortunate abbreviation, the ed- the educated jits out there. Mm-hmm. I, I want to let you all know, like you, you should do this too. Go to the comments in the YouTube uh, for educated discussions and uh, tell us what you made AI versions of no, no, no. or sequels. In the comments for this video, uh-huh. use AI to write a review of the podcast you just listened to. And just see what it says. Have AI choose which story you liked more: Elmo's versus his AI, mm-hmm. or or Felipe yeah. versus there his ai and like and subscribe like and subscribe so so that was it we oh sorry we 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 versed wait AI. wait wait oh felipe wins do i win yeah yeah you win because because <laughs> Dole doesn't magically come back from the dead okay <laughs> no, just... Whew, good thing i didn't hint at that because that was a tight race i feel like mine was a little closer of a call but uh but yeah that post credit scene really derailed everything <laughs> So yeah, so yeah, that's H. Uh, uh, the God, that's AI, very powerful tool. I mean, look how quickly a, a dumb mistake like oh Joel's death or whatever, but look how quickly that was solved. That's still impressive. 
you can be like, wait, so why was he dead? Yeah. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> and it knew, like, hey, Joel, uh, replace him with it. And they, it knew the name Tommy. and Exactly. Inc- so, in- included some context right. for the brother being dead. So, very powerful, still not perfect, as, as we all knew. But are you concerned about AI uh, kind of coming say, into place? Th- definitely. Uh, not even from the perspective of just a teacher, but, like, you know, when it comes to just, like, for example, I'm going to a lot of websites now, whether for news or just trying to like see video game stuff. And like a lot of journalists are saying, like, "Hey, uh, this website is now using AI driven articles." What? Yeah, there really? are websites using AI AI created articles and firing a lot of their staff. Like people are losing oh, jobs no. over this. I haven't and heard of that. That's, that's crazy. Really scary and sad because writing can be such a beautiful art form, and it's it's really scary that we could theoretically this is very like black mirror sounding Mm -hmm. but it we could theoretically head into a future where like especially during a time where there's a writer strike have ai write things and like as long as the people up top are making money like yeah a lot of the creative souls out there could really be getting screwed over yeah it might be a bad it might be a bad season of tv but if people are watching it, then who cares? It's mm-hmm. probably like the the, the thought behind that. Because there was already concern on that that uh, Nick Fury show. The the in- were you aware the, about the intro? The intro credits are yeah. were AI. But uh, whether this is true or not, apparently that was done on purpose. Because the whole idea, yeah, was it was on purpose. But still, it's a scary thing. And like, yeah, why not just pay someone? Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. AI is neat. I. I can see some good uses for it. I heard that dialogue in games, at least for NPCs, like random people around town, I can see a good use there. Mm-hmm. So that way you're not hearing the same thing over and over that yeah. NPC says, like, oh, yeah. good day or whatever. There, there is some actually some other, like, I, I don't know if you've seen, but a lot of voice actors, like, apparently are getting very upset because, uh, not apparently, they are. They're getting upset because people are using AI with their voice. Yeah, Dude. there's a whole Drake album that's okay. not him. And apparently it's amazing. <laughs> so which is a cool idea, but then yeah. it's 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 an incredibly scary kind of, of the course. creatives out there could really get screwed over. Yeah, and then of course now AI is uh approaching visually, you know, obviously not just the plots and, mm-hmm. and scripts that we just read, the- but <clears throat> visual AI. Like the, the 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 other day, like a trailer came out. Did you see that? No. There was a, a two-minute trailer that apparently took, I don't know, seven hours for AI to make, all completely mm. generated, and it didn't look terrible. It looked generic, but very cool. Mm-hmm. The tools available to, like, the common person like me, um, there's even, like, on the what I used for this plot synopsis, mm-hmm. um, there is an image creator option as well. Oh, boy. And I told it to, uh, I, I was messing with it. I was, I, it was like the last week of school. I was talking to my students and we were talking about AI. And then like one of the athletes was, was bragging about something. And I was like, oh, let me see. And, and I, it, I had it make a, an AI generated image of that student playing their sport with okay. no, with no details at all. It was just okay. like, draw John playing football. Yeah, and it made this like horrible monstrosity of a person where like their elbow was coming, their oh. elbow and forearms coming out of their forehead. Oh, it's just, no. it's a really scary place, but it's it it did it immediately, and that yeah, technology will only improve with time. Of course, so maybe there's a way to have humans help AI do it. So like you said, like it did that image immediately, but what if there was some input by humans to be like, okay, no, this mm-hmm. this elbow can't be jutting out of a forehead. It's got to be this. So like maybe there's a way to like be a little bit more precise with how you word and how do you generate that image and maybe some parameters that humans might be able to set and then let, a- let AI kind of do the rest. Which is cool, but again, scary because now graphic designers are yeah, well, a sure. little less needed. No, of course. Yeah. A lot less needed. Yeah, well, in the future, I'm sure that there will be like little tags like no ai is using this movie or no uh, ai oh, was using the production of this so i'm sure that might actually be even we'll be a selling point for like purists but anyways yeah that was our uh our our verses with ai i don't know if we'll explore this in the future i, I kind of liked the uh the you know our, our topic today and, and how we handled that so if it does well 
maybe we'll we'll do this again with maybe a movie or or something similar. Maybe we'll see if we if AI can create a better ending for Game of Thrones. We'll God. see. <laughs> but anyways, thank you for listening, everyone. I know we've been on a little bit of a hiatus, but we are back for the moment. Good things come to those who wait. <laughs> and good things come to those who keep, keep it, it educated. educated.